October 31st, 2025. Three Eye Atlas just reappeared after vanishing on October 29th, and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array detected it four arc seconds off its predicted trajectory. That's not instrument error, that's real displacement. Here's the problem. The object was heated to 770 watts per square meter during perihelion radiation, intense enough to vaporize surface material and create massive outgassing. That should push it slightly off course. Normal comet behavior. But when Harvard's Avi Loeb ran the calculations, the numbers didn't work. The positional shift is too large for natural outgassing unless the object lost at least 15% of its total mass, over 5 billion tons of material. If it did that, we would see a massive debris cloud. Impossible to miss. If we don't see that cloud in the next few weeks, we're looking at the 10th anomaly, non-gravitational acceleration without mass loss. And that's when every natural explanation collapses. Loeb's warning, that's when natural comet stops being the answer. December 19th is the deadline. Subscribe and like the video now, because you'll want to see what the telescopes find or don't find. Let's break down what just happened. On October 29, 2025, three I Atlas reached perihelion at 1.36 astronomical units from the Sun. For context, that's about 203 million kilometers closer than Mars, but farther than Venus. At that distance, solar radiation hits the object at 770 watts per square meter. For a natural comet, that kind of heat causes violent outgassing. Subsurface ices vaporize gas jets erupt, the object loses mass and momentum. That's normal physics. But here's the problem. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, one of the most precise radio telescope arrays on Earth, detected three I Atlas four arc seconds away from where it was supposed to be, based on its forecasted trajectory. Four arc seconds doesn't sound like much. But at the distances we're talking about, that's a positional deviation that can't be explained by measurement error or minor outgassing. Something pushed it off course. Loeb just published calculations showing that gravitational lensing by the Sun, the bending of light predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity, amounts to only a small fraction of the reported deviation. The deflection angle from gravitational lensing would be about 0.27 arc seconds per degree of angular separation, not 4 arc seconds, which means something else moved it. On October 29th, non-gravitational acceleration was reported. That's the scientific way of saying the object is being pushed by forces other than gravity. The question is what? There are two explanations on the table. Scenario 1, massive outgassing. If 3I Atlas is a natural comet, the non-gravitational acceleration must have resulted from it losing at least 15% of its mass, according to Loeb's calculations. That's over 5 billion tons of gas. This should have created a massive debris cloud around the object, a coma so large, it would be impossible to miss in upcoming observations. Think about it. 5 billion tons of gas and dust spreading out from the nucleus, reflecting sunlight, glowing from ionization. That's not subtle. If this is what happened, we'll see it in November and December as 3I Atlas comes closest to Earth on December 19th at 269 million kilometers. Every major telescope, Hubble, Webb, ground observatories worldwide will be pointed at it. If there's a massive coma, we'll see it. Scenario 2. Non-gravitational acceleration without mass loss. If the massive debris cloud isn't there, if 3I Atlas emerges intact without the expected coma, then we're looking at the 10th anomaly. Non-gravitational acceleration without the required outgassing. That's when the conversation changes because natural comets don't do that. If it's moving in ways that can't be explained by losing mass, then something else is pushing it. Internal propulsion, controlled thrust, something that doesn't fit the chunk of ice and rock model. Loeb is clear about what this would mean. If such a massive cloud is not observed, then the 10th anomaly of 3I Atlas would be the display of non-gravitational acceleration without the required massive coma. That's not speculation. That's a testable prediction, and we'll have the answer in six weeks. But before we talk about what happens next, you need to understand why this object has scientists so uncomfortable in the first place. Loeb just updated the list of anomalies. 
With the unprecedented brightening and blue color observed near perihelion by Stereo, Soho, and GOES-19 solar observatories, we're now at nine statistically impossible behaviors. Here's what makes the timing so unnerving. Three remarkable facts about 3i Atlas. It passed closest to the Sun on October 29th, just eight days after solar conjunction relative to Earth on October 21st, and 26 days after crossing the ecliptic plane on October 3rd, when it was the lead, closest to Mars. Whether this confluence of orbital coincidences might be a signature of design or not, Loeb writes, it offers a remarkable opportunity to observe gravitational lensing effects. But it also means the object was positioned exactly where Earth-based telescopes couldn't see it during the most critical moment. Let's go through the nine anomalies that brought us here. First, retrograde trajectory aligned to within five degrees of the ecliptic plane where all our planets orbit. Likelihood for a random interstellar object, 0.2%, looks deliberately oriented to blend into our solar system. Second, during July and August 2025, it displayed a sunward jet, an anti-tail pointing toward the sun, not away. This isn't an optical illusion from geometric perspective like familiar comets. It defies basic physics. Solar radiation pressure pushes material away from the sun always, except here. Third, its nucleus is about a million times more massive than Oumuamua and a thousand times more massive than 2i Borisov, while moving faster than both. Likelihood of this combination, less than 0.1%. Large objects don't move this fast naturally. Fourth, arrival time was fine-tuned to bring it within tens of millions of kilometers from Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, while being unobservable from Earth at perihelion. Likelihood, 0.005%. That's not random. That's a planetary tour with perfect timing. Fifth, Gas plume contains much more nickel than iron, as found in industrially produced nickel alloys. The nickel to cyanide ratio is orders of magnitude larger than all known comets, including 2i Borisov, likelihood below 1%. This composition suggests metallurgical processing, not natural formation. Sixth, gas plume contains only 4% water by mass. Comets are supposed to be dirty snowballs 80 to 90% water ice. This is 96% dry, more like a metallic asteroid than a comet. Seventh, shows extreme negative polarization, unprecedented for all known comets including 2i Borisov, likelihood below 1%. The surface reflects light in ways natural materials don't, and the polarization changes follow a regular 16.2 hour cycle like a signaling system. Eighth, arrived from a direction coincident with the 1977 radio WOW signal to within 9 degrees. Likelihood, 0.6%. The most mysterious radio transmission ever detected, and 48 years later, an object shows up from the same region of space. Ninth, near perihelion. It brightened faster than any known comet and appeared bluer than the sun. That's physically impossible for a natural object. The surface should be orders of magnitude colder than the sun's 5,800 Kelvin photosphere, making it appear redder. Instead, it's bluer, suggesting an internal heat source exceeding stellar temperatures. Multiply all these probabilities together, and you get a cumulative likelihood of less than 1 inch 10 trillion for all nine anomalies occurring naturally. Now we're at the moment of truth. If 3i Atlas lost 15% of its mass at perihelion through violent outgassing, we'll see a massive debris cloud over 5 billion tons of gas when observations resume in November and December. It would be impossible to miss. If that cloud isn't there, if the object emerges intact without the expected coma, then we have the 10th anomaly. Non-gravitational acceleration without mass loss. And that's when every natural explanation collapses. Loeb is calling for coordinated observations across all available platforms. Hubble, Webb, ground-based observatories, radio telescopes monitoring for signals at 1,420 MHz, the hydrogen frequency considered ideal for interstellar communication. On December 19th, 3i Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth at 269 million kilometers. That's our last and best chance to get detailed spectroscopy, high-resolution imaging, and definitive data about what this thing actually is. 
the stakes are clear. If it's a natural comet, we'll see the debris cloud and the mystery contracts into time. Really weird comet with unusual properties. If the cloud isn't there, we're looking at something that doesn't fit any natural category. Out of the hundreds of emails Loeb received yesterday, one stood out. A civil rights attorney and philosophy graduate wrote, Suffice to say, paradigm shifts have never occurred as a result of a person refusing to acknowledge anomalies and insisting on dogmatic existing explanations for new phenomena. He's right. Science advances when we follow the data, not when we dismiss it because it's uncomfortable. If 3i Atlas is displaying non-gravitational acceleration without the required massive coma, the implications are immediate. Natural comets lose mass to create thrust. That's how the rocket effect works. If this object is accelerating without losing mass proportional to the acceleration, then it's using a different mechanism. Internal propulsion. Controlled thrust. Something engineered. Loeb has been clear about what technological origin would mean. A civilization capable of interstellar travel and energy control at Kardashev type 2 or 3 levels. Mastery of physics, we're only beginning to understand. Some researchers in SETI circles are suggesting 3i Atlas could be a von Neumann probe, a self-replicating machine sent to detect life and gather information. Others think it's a monitor node reset every millennia to collect evolutionary data on young civilizations. If it's quietly observing Earth and sending data back, the next question becomes, what happens when it's done observing? The data doesn't speculate, the instruments don't exaggerate, and the timeline is locked in. November. First post-perihelion observations to check for the debris cloud. December 19th. Closest approach to Earth final observation window. If the massive coma is there, 3i Atlas is a natural comet with the strangest properties ever recorded. If it's not there, we're standing at the edge of the biggest discovery in human history. Subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll be covering every major update as the data comes in over the next six weeks. Leave a comment, do you think we'll see the debris cloud, or is this thing about to rewrite the textbooks? Because this isn't a theory. It's happening right now, and the answer is six weeks away.